y'all it is hope at crafty hope and i am working in my art journal this one is a junk journal i made as part of the robin marie smith transitions workshop i'll put a link below to to that tutorial i believe it's a free one so um and i really love this journal so um um for my 100 day project i am using the um one of those photo booths um, pictures from Tim Holtz. I really love those and I'd already picked out one so that's the one I'm going to work with. Now you'll see that this journal page already had a bunch of stuff in the background that was just some papers I had altered before I put it in the journal so there's different things in there. I think there's already some um, I don't know different collage type things and um, those dots that are there are pretty great. Um, so I was kind of fortunate that all that was there, but this still takes me forever to do this. So I decided to, um, on my palette, before I started on this, along with my little picture I was going to use, and I've got just some Americana craft paint in Sea Breeze, and then a Lindy's spray in, oh, hold on, I've got it over here. What is it? It is Shabby Turbine Teal, which is gorgeous. And then I've got just a soft pastel and kind of a lime green that um, I'm kind of just putting all those things together there on that left side of that page and you see put a little paint down, put a little spray down, put a little pastel down and just using my paintbrush here and there and using my finger here and there and um, kind of just blending all of those things together. And then I'm gonna dry it real quick and um, put some more paint down. Um, I think some of this actually ends up getting covered up in the end with my focal but um, I didn't have quite enough of that sea breeze coming through, so I decided I'd put a little bit more down. Um, and then I'm just using, I think that's just a paper towel that I'm kind of just picking some of that up and blending it out. Now this here is Tim Holtz Grunge Board. I don't even know if they sell it anymore. I got it on clearance from somewhere forever ago. And I went through some of my pieces and finally these are pre-cut ones. Um, I think you can also or you could also buy it just in sheets to cut it yourself. So um, this one is just like, um, I don't even know what you'd call that. It's, um, what do you call that? Like a label type thing. Just kind of an oval with holes on the side. And I decided that's what I'm going to use underneath my picture there. So first thing I want to do was um, cut off some of the excess around the outside of that picture. I don't cut it all the way down to the black because I know I'm going to distress the outside of that. And um, I wanted some of the black on there to stay. So I just trimmed it down a little bit. And then I've got this. It's a tonic tool also Tim Holtz Ranger that's um I don't even know what you call that it's like a distressor that's um got like little little blades on the inside to help distress edges of paper so I got that on there and then um I'm gonna rough up these edges a little I want this to look as old as possible I kind of looking back at it wish I had gone over it with a little bit of sandpaper um but I didn't, um, and that's just a thought for another time. So this is old paper distress ink I went with, but it didn't really make much of a, um, an impact. So I'm using Walnut Stain Distress Oxide to, um, to kind of get a little dark thing on those edges. When I roughed them up, a lot of the, the white from the paper had been exposed. So I wanted to kind of take some of that away. So... Um, then I pick out a piece of old tablecloth that I have coffee dyed, I think, coffee or tea dyed. Um, and I am, I'm going to cut out some of this, or speed it up, I think, trying to get it cut down to size. Um, there was a lot of ripping and pulling, and I really love the way this old tablecloth frays. It's, um, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do when I run out of this tablecloth. I'm on the hunt for more, um, old linens to, to tear up like this. So, um. So once I got that ripped and torn, I pulled out just a little bit of gold acrylic paint, and I'm going to paint that little grunge board um, label thing. I wish I knew what that was called. It's bothering me now. I, there, there's got to be something. Um, tag? Maybe it's a tag? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Um, anyway, it's a fun little shape. And I actually have things like that in my jewelry making that um, it kind of is bothering me that I don't know what that shape would be called. So, 
um, I'm going to get that painted gold, and then I'm pulling out this label maker. This is the old-fashioned. I think you can still buy these. Um, I think they're from Dynamo. Dy Dymo? I don't know. Um, I'll try to put a link to it if I can find it. Um, and I just typed out the word dreamer on it. Now, for some reason lately, I think I've been using the words dream and dreamer a lot. You're probably going to see more of that lately. Um, I guess my head's been up in the clouds a bit. So... Um, but I cut it and I'm making sure here that it is going to be not too big for that tag. Um, and I decide it'll be fine. And then I pull out my little drawer full of brads and I'm trying to pick out two that match that, um, won't be too big and cover up that gold typed out word and also won't be too small that they go through those, those fairly large holes. So a couple just kind of brown colored brads I'm going to put on there and, um, once I get those picked out, I'm just going to go over that, um, that tag thing again. And, um, then I come in with my rusty hinge distress oxide because I decide I want that tag to look, I don't know, to look aged and distressed. So I put a little bit of the, um, the rusty hinge on there and then I'm going to come in with a little bit of that sea breeze acrylic paint. And this actually shows up a bit more than anything else. Um, and it gives it like a yummy patina to it. Um, and that I kind of love And I'm glad I didn't go too crazy with it because I totally could have just covered the whole thing in a uh, sea breeze, but then that would have taken away the, the gold of it. So I kind of let it be. I did try the rusty hinge again. Again, like I said, this, the rusty hinge doesn't show up a whole lot, but, um, I may try that effect on something else another time. So. Um, I cut out there. I had a hard time once I trimmed down that little thing. I had a hard time getting the sticker back off and I had to try every tool in the book to get it. So I cut that out for y'all. And then I'm not even, since it is sticker back, I'm not going to put any glue or anything down. I just stick it straight onto my little tag. And then I'm going to do my favorite thing here. Not my favorite thing. What I do in all my videos is futz and kind of try out where I want things. And I did that for a little bit. And then I decided I'm just going to go ahead and start gluing stuff down. So I grabbed my Liquitex Matte Gel Medium and put it on the back of my photo booth picture. And I'm just going to stick that on the fabric. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the... Um, with that little tag. You see, I didn't really put it on the edges because I knew I was going to put that brad there and I didn't want a whole lot of gunk to have to go through to get those brads in there. So, and I've got this, um, oh, what do you call it? It's a piercing tool. It's just a pokey tool that I'm going to, oh, of course, again, I've got to put some more. I don't think it was straight or even or something. Um, so I wanted to, to kind of stick that down again, and I'm going to put more. Since I pulled that up, it pulled up all of my matte medium. I'm going to stick it back down, but I'm going to use the first time I do this, I'm going to use my piercing tool to go in to um, poke a hole to get those brads in there. But then I realized that that fabric is so, um, not thin, but... Um, I guess loose that I don't really need the pokey tool to do it. So and you see, I cut that fabric down to size. I waited to do that because I wanted to make sure I had enough fabric on there. Um, and since it does fray really nicely, I wasn't super concerned about having to use the scissors to cut it rather than rip it. So, um, and here's where I go ahead and I, yeah, that just sticks on straight through just like that. And so then I'm going to grab my Liquitex here again. Actually, no, I'm going to grab that Lindy spray again and spray a couple more spritzes, get it on there because it's got that fun sparkle to it. I also, you may see in the close-up pictures at the end, I, you get a little bit of the splatter and splotchiness in it, and I kind of love that. Um, there's something about, I don't know, like paint splotches that um, is me. So I'm going to put that a little bit of that on there. Um, and again, it's funny. That's almost exactly where I put the picture. So you don't see all of that yumminess. So, um, and then I decide to put some of the rusty hinge, I guess, around the outside to frame it up a little. It's not something you super see, but I think since I put it on the tag, I'm mean not on the tag on the, um, yeah, on the tag a little, I wanted to make sure it kind of carried through. I'm very big on, um, having some consistency. Um, and then I pull in the, um, 
do do walnut stain to stress outside as well. So like I said, consistency, I want to carry those colors through. I'm loving that, that blue-green combination there in the middle. So good. So, so good. Um, and here's why I decided to go ahead and just glue my little stack down. Um, I start kind of going over the brads to make sure I got plenty up in there and they don't poke anything. And I'm going to just stick that down. And I think that's pretty much it for this page, y'all. Um, super simple, not much to it. But if you have any questions, do let me know below. I'll try to list my materials and links and all of that. And um, if you like this, give me a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.